Welcome to another tutorial and we're still working with moles and this time we're going to be talking about molar volume. So volume is applying to gases and these gases have to be at the same temperature and pressure. So we say that these gases are at standard temperature and pressure. What do we mean by that? Well, standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Standard pressure is one atmosphere of pressure. That's a unit of pressure. It is about, you know, similar to the air pressure that you and I experience almost every day, give or take a little bit, okay? So any gas, one mole of any gas, has a volume equal to 22.4 liters at STP, which is standard temperature and pressure. So you do need to know that STP equals standard temperature and pressure. So if we consider this box to have a volume of 22.4 liters, okay, and we're at STP, how many representative particles are going to be in this box of a gas? Remember it contains one mole of gas. So one mole of particles is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Okay, so if we have what are these particles? They could be molecules if we have uh, N2 or O2 or CO2. And usually in terms of gases, we're talking about molecules unless it's an elemental gas like argon or helium or krypton, one of the noble gases, then that would be the particles would be an element. Okay. We can use these, um, this information here for some conversion factors. So um, let's say I have 44 point eight liters of CO2. My question is how many moles of CO2 is this? So we can set up a simple conversion factor using the molar volume of gas. Since we're converting to moles, moles goes on the top. Remember the units we convert to goes on the top. So one mole the units we want to cancel out, liters, goes on the bottom. How many liters are in a mole? 22.4. So our problem is 44.8 divided by 22.4, and this is easy, 2.00 moles of CO2. If we are starting out with moles, if we have 1.50 moles of CO2, okay, how many liters would we have? So our problem here, let me write this down to clarify. How many liters of CO2 do we have? Then the conversion factor is going to be the reciprocal of what you see above. So we're converting to liters, liters goes on the top, moles goes on the bottom, we have 22.4 liters in a mole. So we're taking 1.5 times 22.4, so that is going to be 33.6 liters of CO2. We can also apply this to molar mass. So we can use the liter conversion along with mass problems. So we're going to add a couple now a couple more conversion factors. So we will start out with, say we have 5.89 grams of nitrogen. I want to know liters of nitrogen gas. So now we're starting with grams. So what we have to do is convert to moles. Now, one thing that you can remember all the time with any of these problems, 
if the given quantity is not in moles, you have to convert to moles. Moles is the central concept here. So we have to convert to moles. So we're going to do that, put moles on the top. So we're going to have one mole, and since grams goes on the bottom, this is going to be molar mass. Anytime you have a conversion factor with grams and moles in it, it will be the molar mass of whatever substance you have. And nitrogen has a molar mass of 14.0. There are two of them, so 2 times 14.0 is 28.0 grams. Now I still need to convert to liters, so I need a second step. Since I'm converting to liters, liters goes on the top. Moles can go on the bottom now. I know how many liters are in a mole of a gas. That's standard temperature and pressure. It's 22.4 liters in a mole. And now my problem is set up. Now my hint to you, or my advice to you, is to make sure that you check that your problem is set up properly before doing the multiplication. In order to do this, check to see that your units cancel and you're left with the remaining unit being the one you need. So here we have grams and grams. Those cancel out. Moles and moles cancel out. We are left with liters. That's what we wanted to find, so we know that our problem is set up properly. When we do the math, we're taking 5.89 divided by 28 times 22.4, and this is 4.71 liters of nitrogen. Remember that your answer has to be given to the proper number of significant figures. You're looking at the number of significant figures in the given quantity to determine the number of significant figures in your calculated answer. So here we have all our calculated densities of gases. And <laughs> somehow I stopped. I messed my recording up, so you might have missed all this. But we found our densities by taking the molar mass of each gas and I'll circle these in green. This is the molar mass of nitrogen, the molar mass of O2, the molar mass of CO2, the molar mass of argon, or helium, I'm sorry, and the molar mass of argon. We divide each of those by the molar volume of a gas at SDP, 22.4 liters, and we get the following densities. Over here, I drew balloons. Where would they be in air according to these densities? And nitrogen has a density very similar to air, so it would be suspended in the middle, while helium would rise, oxygen would sink a little bit, argon would sink a lot, and CO2 would sink the most because it is the most dense gas right here. Okay. Given the density of a gas, you can find the molar volume. That means you can identify the gas, which is pretty fun. If we have a density of a gas that's 1.25 grams per liter, we want to find its molar volume. What we can do is multiply by the molar mass of the gas. If we multiply by 22.4 liters in one mole, look what's happening if we consider this as a conversion factor. Look what, how the units are canceling out. Okay, I have liters here and liters here. They are canceling out, and I'm left with grams per mole. That is the, those are the units for molar mass. Another way you can think of it is that density equals mass divided by volume. If I'm solving for mass, mass equals density times volume and that's what I'm doing here okay this is density that's volume I'm multiplying density times volume when I do that I get 28.0 grams per mole as my molar mass I'll do another one that's um, Similar. Let's say I have two, a density of 2.86 grams per liter. I want to find my molar mass. Again, I'm going to multiply by the molar volume, 22.4 liters in one mole. Liters and liters are going to cancel, so I'm left with the units of grams per mole. When I do my multiplication, 
I end up with 64.1 grams per mole as my molar mass. Okay, so remember that that is the molar mass of the gas. This is the molar mass of the gas. This is volume, that is density. So we're taking density times volume equals molar mass.